Today, my friends, we're talking about what Bible you should get and the most important thing, why you should get it. My name is Melissa Dunn, and this channel is all about helping you love the Bible, or maybe you already love it, helping you love the Bible more. That's what we do around here. After last week's video about Bible highlighting, you can find that video in the description below. It was all about not only how to highlight the Bible, but also the perfect Bible highlighting pencil. And many of you messaged me and said something along the lines that my friend Sarah said. I just ordered two. She means these. Now for a new Bible to use them in. Why do I feel like I'm breaking up with my trusty had forever Bible? It's like cheating on my hairdresser. And Sarah, I love that you say hairdresser because that's what I say. And many of you said the exact same type of thing like, Melissa, now I feel like I need a new Bible to do this highlighting method. And quite frankly, I couldn't agree more. And I just want to pause right here to say, when I hear back from you, it is so helpful because I see exactly where you're at and what you're thinking. And probably what you're thinking is the exact same thing that someone else in the community is thinking as well. And so when you say it, it gives me ideas, which ta-da, that's where this video came from, which is picking out the perfect new Bible. Now let's start off with our most important question. Why are you purchasing a new Bible? And you're probably like, well, genius to read it. And to that I say, we must be more specific. Are you wanting a new Bible to freeform float through it? If you're like, what in the heck is freeform floating? You can check out that Bible highlighting video below. We talk about that. Or maybe you're looking to understand the story of the Old Testament, or you want to look at the life of Jesus. You want to hone in on the Gospels. Or maybe you want to look at like a really hefty, somewhat scary book like Isaiah or Revelation or Romans, and you want to really narrow in on that book of the Bible. Or you could simply just want to be more consistent in your Bible reading. All of this really matters when you're deciding what type of Bible to buy. Now, I want to just give you a hint. I do not consider when buying a Bible that it is a lifelong commitment. Yes, I have commitment issues. I don't think every Bible needs to be the most special one that is passed down. I do think we should have one or two or three Bibles that are special, but that is not every Bible's purpose. Instead, when I'm thinking about buying a new Bible, it is with clear intention that I'm buying this Bible. And the goal is not to make this Bible pretty. It is to make this Bible messy. And I don't know about you, but if I have paid $67 for a Bible, I will not write in it. I will not make it messy. So guess what? We're not paying $67 for a Bible. I mean, you can if you want. We're going to buy a Bible cheap, more on that, and we're going to mess the thing up. I mean, we're going to make it messy because even if this is not like the most memorable Bible, if you're getting a Bible from your grandmother, don't you want it to be fully messy? Really what you want to know is where she went in the Bible, what she thought about. How interesting is that? And so we're going to make this Bible real messy. So typically for a Bible like this, I'm not paying any more than five or $10. Here's what I found to be true. A little nugget of wisdom for this Friday. People buy Bibles. Bibles are expensive. People don't read their Bibles. People don't want to throw away their Bibles. Therefore, you can get used Bibles very cheap. And I do this on eBay. So for every single Bible that I mention, I'm going to try to find the cheapest place to buy it, whether that's on eBay or another site. All those links are going to be below in the description. And if you're confused, like I was when I first got on YouTube and you're like, how do I get to the description? You will find this little down arrow, just press it, and you're gonna find all those links right there. Five types of Bibles that will help you study the Bible, maybe in a new way. Let's talk chronological Bible. A regular Bible are not chronological, meaning they don't go in time order necessarily, which means if you've ever read, especially through the Old Testament, and you're reading and you're like, okay, all these kings' names sound the same, and didn't I read this exact same story two books back? Why is it repeated here again? It gets confusing. Usher in a chronological Bible. I use this because two years ago I decided, I mean, I didn't decide, I noticed, I did not have a very good grasp on the big picture of the story of the Old Testament. I was confused about a lot of things. I got this for $5 in free shipping on eBay. 
let's take a look on the inside. Haha, <laughs> look here. Terrifying. Whatever, whatever this is had terrified me. Obviously, Lamentations. You'll notice that there are no verses. There are no chapter breaks. You can see where you're at in the Bible with this little thing right here. This particular Bible has a little bit of help guide right here just to sort of orient you into what you're about ready to read. I have found it super helpful. It's not too much. It's just right. So it's it's giving you a better and fuller picture. Here we've got 2 Kings, then we're back to Jeremiah, then we're back to Jeremiah. It really makes a huge difference as you're trying to understand the story. This is why our whys are important. I'm not toting this thing to church because I'll be doggone if I can find a thing in it. It's very difficult to like find Matthew chapter 5. That's not why I use it. I use it to see the bigger picture story of the Bible. Number two Bible that I recommend by Crossway, which I wish some other publishers would come on the scene with them. If there is, let me know in the comments below. I have not seen any. The ESV, it's the only version that I know of that has these wonderful idea. You can buy a Bible just by the book, which means there's only one book of the Bible in this Bible. Does that make sense? It is just one book of the Bible. You've got scripture on one side of the page and then you've got journal notes on the other side of the page. This is where you get to hone in and just focus on that book of the Bible. This would be ideal if you are overwhelmed by the scope of like opening up your Bible. Grab you one of these. They are $8.99 on Amazon. Number three, pocket Bible. This is gonna be a little tiny mini Bible. My friend Andy is gonna tell you why she totes this thing around. My Bible is actually really tiny and I love that. I've had friends who said, why is your Bible so small? It looks like a little tiny children's Bible kind of thing. By the way, it's not that small. But for me, I love the size of this because I can always tell, typically, where my relationship with God is and how much my heart wants Him based on the fact of my Bible being in my purse and on my laptop and sometimes on with some jeans even in my back pocket. In other words, for me, my preference hands down is a Bible that's super portable because it keeps the Word of God at the forefront of my mind by being a visual cue to see it wherever I'm at and whatever I'm doing, it's right there with me. So flip it open and read it, even if it's just one verse. Create the habit of Bible reading with a small pocket Bible. I also do not know what number four is called. Let us just name it. The Bible with no chapters or verses. My friend and pastor Jeremy Wilkinson is gonna tell you just a little bit more about it. So this Bible, the books of the Bible, was given to me at a conference a handful of years ago and it sat on the shelf. I didn't really think much about it until earlier this year, I was just looking for a new way to read through it and I grabbed it and I looked at it and I realized it didn't have any chapters or verses in it. it uh, all those had been taken out and the books of the Bible had actually been rearranged to share more of the arc of the story. It's not quite chronological, but it's to capture more of the story. And I think that's probably what I like about it is that I can sit down, I read large chunks of it at one time, and then I can look at the overall story that God is trying to share. And it's just brought scripture alive in a new way in this season. Oh, the moment I've been waiting for. The unveiling of the ESV Study Bible. Now, remember I said I don't pay $67 for a Bible because then I don't want to write in it. Well, enter in this bad boy that was more than $67. Doesn't it look like it's dropped straight in from 1845? I love it so much. Listen, I still keep it in its case. This is why I wish I would have gotten this used on eBay. But I digress. This is for study. So it is like most study Bibles, but it's a little bit more in depth. So it's going to give you maps. It's going to give you the key themes, historical summaries, literary features, outlines. It's just going to be your study Bible 
on steroids. I don't, I don't know. That doesn't seem appropriate, but that's what it is. So my why for my big ESV Bible is just for generic study. So those are the five Bibles that I recommend for Bible study. But listen, I did not recommend all five to be used all at once. Pick one. Pick one and then use it with a really specific purpose. And listen, it doesn't have to be for the rest of your life. It could be a season of three months or six months or a year. Because maybe you'll be like me. You'll get the chronological Bible. You'll use it for 18 months. You'll get through the Old Testament. And then you put it down once you finish the Old Testament. But guess what? She's picked it back up. And I'm starting to use this again to work my way through the New Testament using the chronological Bible. Bible reading should be enjoyable. And the way that we can make a step toward enjoying it, if we don't already, trying out something that's just a little bit different. Okay, friends, until next week, what are we doing next week? The Lord is near. It's going to be a mini little teaching on the Lord being near. Have you ever felt like the Lord was far off and at a distance? Well, Philippians 4 has something to say about that. Until next week, friend, I will see you then. I remember Andy saying that she, this, I remembered Andy, I remember, I remember Andy saying, Andy was in, Andy started talking about this really tall, really small Bible that she would tote around. Yeah.